<clears throat> Welcome to February 28th, 2022. The whole world is on the verge of annihilation, at least extremely close to it. I'm going to edit that out of this video. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm not a doom and gloomer. I never have been. Although the world kind of makes you feel that way sometimes. Um, dualism, yeah. Dualities. Principle and attributes, yeah. Existential antinomies. There's a difference between an antinomy and a duality. Fundamentally, and I'm not interested in discussing religion, you have this idea of God... Yes, not all religions, of course, are like that. Talk about creationistic religions, by the way. They're called Abrahamic religions. Kind of a funny joke, by the way. I've got to stick this in here. It's a really dry yet humorous joke. <clears throat> that uh, the word uh, Abrahman, as in Abrahamic, means something very specific in both Pali and Sanskrit. It's kind of an inside joke used by Indian uh, sadhus and gurus now for quite a long time. The word literally means anti-God or anti-absolute, i.e. demonic. Um, that's probably not funny, but uh, <laughs> when it comes to metaphysics, it's kind of funny when you say it's Abrahamic. It's kind of like a, a funny joke in Pali or Sanskrit because what you're literally saying is demonic. So, well, it's Abrahamic, and like... It's literally a prefixual means the opposite of or inverse to Brahman, to the absolute. So anti-Brahman or anti-absolute. Um, anyway, I'll also edit that out of this edit that out of this video because that could potentially, you know, set some people off. But you know, some people don't have a sense of humor. I uh, kind of don't uh, believe or I cleave to people who don't have a sense of humor. You know, it's, maybe it's a little bit too dry. Anyway, getting on to dualities. It's about the uh, attribute of the absolute, which, of course, is not other than the one. And people have been asking themselves this question since the dawn of time. You know, if there is only the good, how is evil allowed? Well, there's nobody to allow it, but evil is not something other than the absolute. It's the absence or privation of the absolute. This notion of a prima causa or first cause, i.e. original sin, is completely absent in monistic monism. And what do I mean by monistic monism? Like Advaita Vedanta, original, and I emphasize the word original, original Buddhism. Um, the principle of Upanishads, you know, the teachings of Sri Sankaracharya, the teachings of uh, Pythagoras, Plato, um, Plotinus, Numenius, Syrianus, Demetius, um, ancient Egyptians also too that uh, there is not something other than the absolute. I don't know if you know this or not, or you know the Fibonacci sequence, but the first two digits of the Fibonacci sequence are one and one, which are not two things. They're one thing only, principle and attribute, kind of like light and illumination. Um, of the absolute and its attribute, no different than the good and what the good is, is also, too, that which the good does. The word does is inappropriate from a metaphysical perspective in referring to the absolute, the good and the good principle and attribute, or one and one, as in the case of the first teachers of the Fibonacci sequence. Mind and consciousness, yeah? These are actually antinomies. These are not dualities. And conventional human beings see dualities. Good and evil, it's duality. There is a certain uh, Indian faith, it's been around since uh, Dvayavada, uh, that believes that the world is a duality. And what it's actually referring to, it's a metaphysical nuance. This is where a distinction, a minor distinction, is a huge difference. It's not a duality, you know, that uh, there is evil with, co-eternal with uh, God or the absolute. That's not the case. There's the absolute and there's, of course, the privation of the absolute. With attribution, you have manifestation. With manifestation, you have antinomies. It's not a duality. It's an antinomy, uh, such as mind and consciousness. And, of course, in English, these are really horrible words because we think of mind and consciousness involving the you know the uh, the jello-like lump that exists between our ears. In the case of mind, and then in the Pali, the word is chitta, or in the the Greek, the word is nous. This is actually ab extra. 
to the brain and of course to the body. The consubstantiality of both, as I've said in many countless videos, is consciousness. We don't have that distinction in English. That's word, why the word thought, mind, and consciousness are really horrible in English because we lump these things together as one thing, which of course they're not. In true metaphysics, anyway, they are not one thing. They are different things. Now, being and becoming, um, self and the mere self, we're talking about the existential self, the persona non grata of uh, flesh and blood, yes, which of course is as most repeated phrase in ancient Pali uh, Sutta, nami suata, not my soul, not myself. Self is differentiated from the existential self or the smaller s. We're talking about the soul versus the self. One has a beginning in time, that self, persona non grata, Bob, Sue, Larry, so on and so forth, and the transcendent self, which of course is ab extra, just like the signal. There's no signal in a radio, and you know, there's no a fireplace in this iMac, obviously, so it's getting a signal through a Wi-Fi signal through my router, so, and that, of course, is being videotaped, of course, in this case, recorded. So we all know that there's no fireplace in this, but that signal is ab extra to this iMac. It's not a fireplace in this iMac, obviously so. And we recognize that superficially, but we don't make a connection as to how important that is. There is no self or soul in the body, but that is not a denial of the self or the soul, which is ab extra to this psychophysical body, obviously so. There's no signal in the radio, but of course the broadcast from the signal. Then of course we have the antinomies. What's the absence of the broadcast? In the case of the radio analogy, it would be death. Death is not uh, the opposite of life. It's the breakup of life, because life is the consubstantiality of matter and spirit, working as one in unison to have life, to have existential consciousness. So, same difference, and of course I literally wrote the book on magnetism between the dielectric and the magnetic. These are different uh, field modalities, i.e. ether perturbation modalities, but they're both one and the same thing. Magnetism is the dielectric field. Magnetism is not something unique or different from dielectricity. Dielectricity is geometry, the field geometry is the hyperboloid or the hourglass shape. The negative image of an hourglass is a torus, by the way. These, of course, are the geometries of force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Centripetal convergence and centrifugal divergence. These are not two different things. These conjugate geometries, of course, are a holos, meaning a one, a whole unit of something that, of course, are differentiated out, like principle and attribute. Because human beings, in the case of light and illumination, which is a near-perfect analogy, we think of these as two different things. Well, turn on the light, and I got illumination falling on my head. You know, illumination falling on my book, so I can read my book. These are principle and attribute. Yeah. Nobody sees light. They see illumination. They see the extrinsic nature of light. By the way, when you turn on the light, every human being also, too, suffers this delusion. They think that a light bulb emits light. It doesn't. A light bulb emits light, it sets up an ether perturbation modality. If a person is in the middle of a pond, flapping their arms in the middle of a pond and creating waves in the medium, in this case the water, of course, would be the ether. Um, uh, the ether construct, in the case of a person flat, they're not emitting anything. They're setting up a perturbation in the medium. When I actually speak and cause vibration in this microphone, I'm not emitting anything. I'm setting up a disturbance in the air. This is, of course, the reason why Nikola Tesla said that light can be nothing other than a sound wave in the ether. Sound is not an emission either, neither is light. But we think, and of course when we have this illumination, we have something else. We actually have gross matter, which of course rocks light and creates shadow. Shadow is not a thing, shadow is an absence of thumping, something. And this is where human beings have this horrific delusion of dualities. But there is no dualities in natura naturans or nature. These antinomies are manifest due to the fact that there are differentiations due to manifestation and leading out to the extrinsic attribute of these principles, like an illumination, like the good of the good, i.e. good and what the good does, right? So, these conjugate geometries, like I said, are holos, the whole or the extrinsic attribute of the principle. Same as with the dielectric and the magnetic. Now, the negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. The negative image of a, of a hyperboloid is a torus, but together they are one. The hyperboloid and the magnetic torus are one. Together they are a sphere. Geometry, I mean, nature's uh, most uh, simplex uh, geometry. Inertia and acceleration, force and motion. These are co-eternal principles of the principle and the attribute. They're not two different things. 
The Greeks called the second one in the Fibonacci sequence, they called it three different things. And it takes forever to explain each word. Euristos dias, they also called it tolma, and also called it ananke. Ananke loosely translates as necessity, but what it really translates as uh, means uh, it cannot be any other way. In other words, it must be that way. So, These existential antinomies like life and death, young and old, potential and actual, fat and skinny, right? Bald or someone that has hair. We have these existential antinomies as found in life, of course. Principle and attribute are not a duality. They are not a duality. They are a co-eternal. Nothing can be conceived, whether real or unreal, that doesn't have at least one attribute, and that includes the absolute. Nobody could think of anything, dream of anything, or imagine anything that doesn't have an attribute. Nothing is or can't even be known that doesn't have at least one attribute. It's impossible. Literally, think about that for a second. Nobody could dream of anything or imagine some sort of uh, mythical creature spontaneously generated in a... In a, uh, you know, in a dream or whatnot, or even in a daydream, it doesn't have one attribute. It's impossible. Nothing can be known. Nothing is or can be real or unreal. It doesn't matter if it's real or unreal. Phenomenal or noumenal, that makes, doesn't make any difference. It's completely impossible. Anyway, the absolute is always beyond antinomies, or what is beyond good and evil. What is beyond good and evil is beyond antinomies, i.e. the absolute. So, um, All dualities, of course, are worldly. They are existential. Yeah, those are the dualities, specifically the antinomies in uh, nature, as manifest. But there are no dualities in the absolute. There's no duality of, uh, of the good or the one or whatever word you want to use. Nature doesn't care what word you use, and neither do I. I don't care about religions. I care about facts, logic, and wisdom, and ultimate truth in the case of uh, genuine metaphysics. So co-eternal of the absolute, like once again, light and illumination, good and the good, principle and the attribute. These are not emissions. These are the extrinsic attributes of that which is most simple. Magnetism is the dielectric field. If you want to make the most simple analogy, and this is an irrefutable fact since I'm world's foremost expert on magnetism, I can say that without hubris, even though it sounds hubristic. <clears throat> the magnetic field is the dielectric field and the loss of energy or inertia. It is the extrinsic attribute. Magnet, uh, magnetism is to the dielectric like illumination is to light. Magnetism is to the dielectric like that which the good does, i.e. good, is to the good itself, principle and attribute. Not two different things. What makes you think the first two digits of the Fibonacci sequence, i.e. the golden ratio, are one and one? Yeah? <sighs> Ignorance says that this is original sin. You know, this is the reason for downfall. There is no original sin. There's no prima cause or there's no first cause. It's completely impossible and antithetical to facts, logic, and wisdom and the very foundation of monistic metaphysics. Monistic metaphysics of ancient India vis-a-vis -vis Advaita Vedanta, original Buddhism, uh, Pythagoras, Plato, Plotinus, Numenius, Syrianus, the Egyptians, on and on and on and on. Not something different. However, existentially, they are different because they are the source of antinomies, the source of our false conception of dualities. I wanted to keep this video short and simple. You know, I could sit and blather on about this for hours and hours and hours. People would roll their eyes at the back of their head. Like, don't go any deeper. I still don't get what you said. I tried to keep this video really simple, but someone's still going to say, this video was, he spoke too fast or used too big of words. And I don't want that to be the case. I'm not interested in trying to impress anybody with big words. This is actually how I think and how I talk. I'm trying to keep it very, very simple, which I think I have in this video. However, you might contest that and tell me I failed. Let me know. Anyway, have a lovely week. Goodbye.